Hey guys, it's Zania here. I hope that everybody is doing great. I hope that everybody is good health-wise, mentally, emotionally. Um, I wanted to do this song called I Need You, You Need Me by Hezekiah Walker. And um, the reason why I wanted to do this song was because of everything that we are going through. Um, the body of Christ, we need each other in this moment more than ever, especially for those that do not know about Christ. And we just need to let them know that we're here to pray for them. But also in the body of Christ, we need to pray for each other and give each other that encouragement. So I pray for all my brothers and sisters in Christ um, all around the world and that you may be encouraged by this song.
two weeks ago we started this program and I was ministering to your little brothers and sisters and all the other little ones and tonight we are at we are at the 10th night of this two week evangelistic series aimed at educating our boys and girls our teenagers young men and women in being independent in the Lord and being what God needs in this world uh, continuous lights and also additions to the body of Christ my dear young men and women it's been a wonderful time myself and sister Sadi have had a blast and I, I have I have been having a great time just standing before you and presenting to you information that you need some of us growing up in this world wish we had that when we were growing up and um, the fact that you are getting it here and from wherever else that is continuing to spread the truth my dear young men and women I pray that these words that have been spoken for the last two weeks and boys and girls I pray that you have listened and if you've missed any one of them we have our YouTube channel the Cisterns of Living Water YouTube channel there is one playlist that says suffer the children that's for the kids there is another playlist that is going to say arming the youth there's going to be five messages under each one ten messages in all it's there anytime you want to view it it's not going to take too much of your time and it's 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 invaluable information and so we invite you that even though you've missed a large portion of the two weeks you can go back on youtube and watch it anytime that you want if you know somebody who needs the information that was given the last two weeks you can take these videos and just send it to them on WhatsApp, on Facebook Messenger, wherever. You know, it's there, it's free, there is no restrictions on it as far as we know. There may be restrictions from YouTube on some of the songs, but you can share the videos. The videos can be viewed anytime you want and shared anytime you want. The content that has been given is invaluable. It's not about me or Cisterns of Living Water or Sister Sadie. It's about God's work being done through us. And we are just happy to be able to share with you the reality of what's going on in this world, my dear young men and women. So appreciate the type of information that you were getting when you were young. Some of us didn't have it, you know, to give. And so those of us who have it now continue to give back and we hope that you continue to learn. So we'll save the thanks for a little bit later. We want to get into the program this evening. I want to say good night to all the young men and women who's on. I see some names here. Sister Carol Smith, God bless you and your family. Sister Nika Mead, God bless you, your dear mother, Sister Loressa, your dear brother Elijah, and all the rest of your family, God bless you. Sister Mary and Alexander, today was a special day for you, and I saw you earlier, I forgot to tell you, God bless you richly on this very special day, another year of life. Anytime that we can reach these milestones of life, we can continue to count the blessings of God. So we thank God that he has kept you, Sister Marian, for another year. And uh, we know that you are one of his servants, one of his children. You've given your life to him. So may year after year your service continue to be magnified in the Lord. I trust you had a wonderful day. I know you worked today, but by the grace of God, you can relax now and enjoy what is another year of life. Sister Camelia Arthur, God bless you richly. Sister Paula Cho, God bless you. Good evening, Brent. God bless you, young man. Chelsea, God bless you, young princess. A Brent young prince Kia and Sky. I want to make sure that you hear me brother Chung God bless you God bless the Cho family Brent and Chelsea have been watching throughout this entire two-week series so I thank you guys for watching and I pray that you've learned a lot from what has been given all right so I'm gonna pray I'm not gonna mention any names at the start because I'm gonna say a very special prayer at the end for every single name that was given to us when we started this last week. And so a special prayer will be said for all of you at the end of this program. So we'll just pray to start and we'll get right into it. Good evening, dear mother. My love to Alan, Luan, Danny, Anisha, Alan, sorry, Adam and Harper, even Harper. God bless you. Good evening. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we get into the final program of these children series, I want to thank you for what you have done for the last two weeks. And tonight is no different. Help me to speak as you give me the words. And I pray that I will share it to the young men and women who are listening for their growth. Even some of us older ones are learning from these things. 
And so, dear Father, we thank you for what you have done and what you are doing tonight. Continue to lead me, direct me, and I pray that I will speak to the understanding of everyone who's listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tonight, my dear young men and women, we are going to be dealing with God, the mind. All right? Now, you guys have received a lot of information during the course of this week. And it all is supposed to go to inspire you to use this here, number one, and to also guard this for a very important reason. Because forces in the world wants to motivate you to use this, number one, for good, number two, for bad. When you are dealing with the mind, you have within your heads, of course, your brain enshrouded in your skull. In what your brain is, which is not, uh, your, your brain is the tangible, your brain is the physical, your mind is the spiritual. Now, when it comes to your brain, it is called the central intelligence agency of you. Why is that? Everything goes to the brain. When you look at something, it is not your eyes that tell you what you're looking at, it's your brain. Because when you look at a chair, you must be told that's a chair that you're looking at. Someone told you that's a chair. When you were looking at a dog, someone told you that's a dog, that's a cat. That information went to your mind. And so when you look at something, the information that is in your mind tells you what you're looking at. When you smell, when you taste, when you hear, when you feel, this all happens in the mind, the central intelligence agency. It is also where you think. In your mind, you express thought. Things are said to you. Things are done to you before you even do something. You have a thought about it. You wake up in the morning. Thoughts go through your mind. Do I want to go to school today or do I want to go to school today? And so all these thoughts go through your mind and you act based on those thoughts. What do I want to eat for breakfast? You have the thought. Do I want cereal today or do I want just a bagel? Do I want orange juice? Do I want apple juice? Thoughts occupy your mind every single day every single moment of your life thoughts occupy your mind then you have expressions what do i want to do to react in certain um you are presented with certain situations in life how do you want to express yourself when you have painful situations it registers in your mind and your expression your body's expression comes from what is in your mind whether it's anger whether it's sadness whether it is fear whether it is joy, these things are expressed from the mind and then the body reacts based on where the mind is leading. Direction, where is your life going? What do you want to do with your life? All this is based on information that you receive in your mind and also things that you discover. What do you like? Not everybody can be a doctor. Not everybody can be a lawyer. But you gravitate to what you like. Not everybody is good at math. So what you like, you gravitate to. English, literature, science, math, whatever it is. You get your perspective in your mind. And then ultimately what I want you to understand why it is serious, young men and women. Your mind is your citadel. Your brain is very important. Doctors tell you you have to protect your head from whether you get hit in your head, fall on your head. Your brain is important. You can, do, you can do serious damage to yourself if you get a serious blow to your head. You can also do serious damage to yourself when you give blows to your mind. When, you, when what occupies your mind is junk. When you put junk into your mind, then your body will always react in a manner. When you put junk into a computer, the more sites you go on that have viruses, your computer can run for a certain amount of time. But after a while, when you have accumulated so many viruses, your computer slows down and then your computer ceases to function with the more viruses that it receives. When you continue to think on things that are not good, you are filling your body with thoughts that are not good and your body begins to react to the impure thoughts of your mind. That's why it's very important how you treat your mind. It's important how you treat your brain. It's also important how you treat your mind. You have your lives ahead of you. And even now your minds are working. 
to what your life ahead of you will be. So I want you to, from tonight moving forward, if you've never done it before, to begin to think of your mind as a citadel. A citadel can also be called a fortress. Have you ever seen movies about kings where they have their uh, castle? It is their fortress. They build a wall around it. They protect it from all the armies that want to come and destroy the people within. So that is their fortress and they defend it with their life. I want you tonight to begin to take your mind very seriously. All right, what goes in will always come out. What you put into your mind will motivate your thoughts and it will also motivate your desires, whether for good and whether for bad. Everybody who does things in this world must use their mind to do it, good or bad. All right, you must understand. So your mind is your citadel. Learn that, know that, and know it's very important what goes in. Let me tell you something. The information that you have received this week, there are some things that you cannot understand right now in the current stage of your life. When you get information, it is not always for the now. You are getting information for the future. And the minute you find yourself in a situation, if this information means a lot to you, you will register it. Okay, here's what I want you to understand. I don't expect you to know everything now. We didn't know everything when we were your age. You are not expected to know everything now. Life is going to teach you some things. You can be told about life. I can tell you my experience, but my experience may not be yours. You may have a total different experience than me. That's why I try to teach the principle. The principle mean the whole scheme of the world, good and bad. I want you to understand because you right now in your life, are being groomed all right there is the darkness of the world where satan rules is grooming you to do something bad then there is the good of the world where god is wants to groom you to do something good no matter how you try to escape it you are being groomed right now to serve the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light the kingdom of satan or the kingdom of god and it is important what you take into your mind because what you take into your mind grooms you to serve Satan or serve God. Listen to the Bible. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 6. In 2 Timothy, Timothy is a young servant of the Lord. Paul is his mentor. Paul is speaking to Timothy about how Timothy should live his life. It is the same thing that as I am doing tonight for those of you. All right? So, Paul says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Okay. Every single one of you have been given gifts. All right. To be a doctor is a gift that God has given you. To be a policeman, to be a teacher, to be a plumber. Whatever it is, even athletes are gifted by God. A basketballer is tall because that is a gift given to him. Not everybody's a basketballer. Some are soccer players. Some are football players. Some are boxers. The skills that they have been given have been developed. Their bodies um, uh, are developed and their skills are developed so that they can excel at what they do. Everybody is given a gift. Understand this, my dear young men and women. God gave gifts. God made man. And so God gave man gifts. Understand this. Satan did not gift anybody with anything. God gifted man with the ability to do things. What Satan did is take the gifts that God gave to man and corrupts them. When you're a singer, you can sing for God or he sets up a system where you can make a lot of money to sing for him. And singing for him may bring you a lot of temporary money and celebrity, but it destroys your life. All right? Everything that God gifted, Satan corrupted it. The same way God wants to use you for good, Satan wants to use you for bad. He corrupted the things of God. He corrupted the gifts that God gave. So you have the choice of what you want your or who you want to direct your life 
by the decisions that you were making every single day. All right? And you're getting the information now because now is the time. You don't wait till later. So Paul says, I want to remind you and I also want to stir up the gift of God which is in you, sorry, um, by the putting on of, of my hand. So Paul is blessing Timothy. That is essentially what the church is supposed to be. I know many times it's not happening in your church. Many of the older folks want to keep you down. I don't want you to let that lose your love for God. It's just that some people don't know how to behave as older to the younger. So they may discourage you. They may feel threatened by you. I, just, I don't want you to take that to mean that's how God is. People who are acting that way, they are not acting the way that God intended for them to act. Do not blame God for the actions of others. I know it, it's bad, some of the ways that you have been treated, even in churches. But I don't want that to shake your faith. I want that to make you stronger. I want that to even increase your bond with God. No one can stop you for the purpose that God has called you. All right? No human being. If you're driven and you allow God to lead you, no human being can stop you. They can be a roadblock. They can be a stumbling block, but God will remove them from your way. It is to make you stronger. All right? I want you to know that. They can pester you. They can bother you. But God will remove them out of the way unless they repent. So don't let people and the things people tell you continue to make you feel less than yourself. I want you to be stronger than that in God. So Paul is blessing Timothy for the ministry. And Paul says, I want to stir up the gift of God inside you. God has gifted every single one of you to serve him. Not all of you can be pastors. Don't just try to be a pastor because you like seeing a pastor. You have to have the gift in you. And you will know that you have the gift in you. I knew that I have the gift of speaking from the time I was a child. I was not a person who liked math. I was very uh, average at math. It's not my thing. I did it in school because I needed to do it. Because math is important when you are growing up. Sooner or later you have to work. You have to get paid. You have to learn to add and subtract in life. But math was not my thing. I excelled at English. I was a genius in literature. And so that meant I love to read. I love to write. So I read and I write. And I, sorry, I read and I wrote. God gave me that gift. And so today, God uses that gift in that I still put things together. I write, I read, and I preach. I knew this ever since I was a little boy. I would go into the, the, uh, into the back of the house and preach to the trees. We used to have sheep. I would talk to the sheep. It was joy to do that for me. It was easy for me to do that because that was my gift. Some of you are gifted in many different things. You know, just because you cannot preach doesn't mean you're not gifted. Every one of you growing up has a gift. Every one of you is gifted by God to do something for him. You have to know what that gift is, what you're good at, what you love doing. God wants to use you in that way. You hear me? Nobody is useless when it comes to God. Everybody has a gift for God to use for his glory. So that's what Paul is doing with Timothy. Now listen to what Paul says to Timothy. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound, listen to that word again, mind. You are growing up in a world that feeds on your fear. The world is using COVID-19. The world is using wars. The world is using crime. The world is using money. The world is using school. Whatever it is, my dear young men and women, to have you be afraid. And when you are afraid, the world says, here is our solution. And when you are afraid, you will depend on anybody to protect you. So when you depend on the world to protect you, what will the world do? The world will take from you your freedom. The world wants you to live the way they want. The world wants you to continue to give yourself to it. The world will even take your life if necessary for the system to work. The system is broken because the system is a system of sin. Governments cannot save you. Governments cannot save the world. Money cannot save the world. Celebrities cannot save the world. The world is becoming more and more violent, more and more evil. And the world is hoping that you will be afraid so that you will bow to the world 
There is a time coming when the world will say, bow to us or bow to God. If you're afraid, you will bow to what is called the beast. We'll do that later on in a, in a prophecy for youth seminar. But the world wants you to be afraid. But the Bible says God did not give you the spirit of fear. Now, if you don't have God in this world and you are growing up, you will be afraid. I know we like to talk tough and brave. But the times that are coming, the hard times that are coming in this world, you will not stand if you don't have God. You know what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians? The Bible says, and somebody can put that in the chat so the youth can see it if they, if they are on. Uh, the scripture that says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's the book of Ephesians. Someone put the exact scripture in the chat so I can say it to the youth. The Bible says, the war we wage is not physical, but is spiritual. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities against spiritual wickedness in high places. I know you see a lot of wars happening. I know you see a lot of crime happening. But it is not just about the people. It is about the spirits around and inside the people. This is the war that is faced in the world. My dear young men and young women, if you don't have God in the times that you are living in, you will have fear. And when you have fear, you will follow the world. But the Bible says God have not given the spirit of fear. God gave us power because God is still more powerful than Satan, even though you see evil in the world. The God has love for us. And in God, you have a sound mind. When you are not in God, you cannot have a sound mind. Mind is spirit. The world deals in brain and the world corrupts your mind by what it puts into your brain. God gives a sound mind. Because only God has truth. Only God has true love. You cannot find true love in the world. The world loves you as long as it can take from you. The next thing that you will discover as you are growing up in this world, it's all about what people can take from you. For the majority of people in the world, it's about taking and taking and taking. Few people ever think of what I can give, what I can do for others. It's all about selfishness. The world is rooted in selfishness. And so the world wants to use you and use you. Thank you, Sister Sadia. Ephesians chapter 6, 12 to 17. You want to write that down as the real war that is happening in the world. The war in the spirit. So the world wants to use you and use you and use you until it cannot use you again. That's how the world is. And so the world will use you as a slave for as long as it can. And then put you in the ground in your grave. But the Bible says God has given us a sound mind. With a sound mind, we can see everything that is happening in the world and we can make right decisions. So when Paul says to Timothy, I want to stir you up, it means rekindle. When you're talking about kindle, you're talking about fire. When you start a fire, you, you call it kindling a fire. So it's not enough for you to just do things or just go to church, just read your Bibles, just participate in what? Scouts or Pathfinders, thank you, Sister Carol Smith, as well, on, on Facebook, uh, to just, just do Pathfinders and to just do Scouts, to just go to church, to just do camps in the summer, do your Bible because mommy says so, or your school teacher, or your a Sabbath school, or Sunday school teacher says so. This must be stirred up inside you. You must have an excitement for God. That is what the Word is supposed to do in you. And so, when you're talking about fear, it's about cowardice. Like I said, the world wants you to be a coward so that you can fall for whatever they give you. But when the Bible says God has given us power, it is divine power. Not the power that you get in a gym. Not the power that you get when you drink a Red Bull. It is divine power. Spirit power. That's real power. Sound mind. Self-control. You can't exist in this world for God unless you have a sound mind. And God is the only one that can give you a sound mind. The world cannot do that. The world affects your mind. The type of food that it gives you. The type of movies and entertainment that it gives you. How it requires you to work long hours to try and make money. It gives you money and it takes away money. The world does not have your good and it can never give you a sound mind. You can never have peace in this world. This world is not capable of giving you peace. 
Even celebrities full of money do not have peace. Even athletes full of money don't even know love. Even rich people kill themselves. What sort of thing is that? The world is incapable of ever giving you peace. So don't ever settle in your minds that you can have peace in the world. You need to work. You need to earn a living because you cannot be lazy. But you should not want money more than God. You should not want fame above God. Your job should not come before God. Your school should not come before God. God has to be first in your life and everything else he will help you with. I was able to succeed better in school. I tell, I tell young people that all the time. In my house, I had a wonderful home where we had family worship, where my mother and father taught us the Bible, brought us to church and set the example for us. I found that in my time in school, my mind worked better because I always did Bible study. And even when I was a young preacher, the church in, in, in Babono gave me chances to preach. It also helped develop my mind. Reading the Bible develops your mind physically and also spiritually. And it also makes you even more brilliant in school. That's a tip I want to give you that I want you to put into practice. Bible study really develops your mind more than just reading the books that they give you in school. Now, I want to also talk to a lot of young people. You've lived your life in this world. You've already made a lot of mistakes. Some of you may be in a gang. Some of you as young um, uh, teenage girls have already had children, all right? You've, you've made some mistakes and you feel somehow that you are not worthy. Some of you young people have already been kicked out of the church. Maybe you got pregnant while and the, the church disciplined you and um, the members no longer call you. Some of you were baptized when you were young. Nobody ever gave you Bible study. Nobody ever looked after you. And then you eventually left the church. And so... You may have found yourself in a lot of situations in life that was not good. You may have done a lot of things that were bad. And you think in your heart that you are so bad you cannot come to God. God doesn't love you. Some of you have grown up and you have been told over and over again that you are a bad and evil child. You are Satan's child. And you believe that so much that when you grow up, you don't even want to come to God. You're ashamed because you don't feel that you're worthy. That God doesn't want anything to do with you. You believe what you've been told your whole life, that you're a bad child, and you live as a bad child. You commit crimes. You know, some of you, your, your parents may be sharing this with you, and you're in prison, and you're watching this video. I don't know where this video is going to go. So I have to speak to you tonight. Listen to this scripture in Psalm 119 and verse 9. And I'm a living testimony. I grew up in a good home, and I still found a way to go and make a mess out of my life. Listen to what the Bible says. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse? Soak in that word. When you're reading the Bible, every word is important. Every word. Read it slowly. That you want to take everything that the Bible says. Wherewithal, where, how shall a young man cleanse, clean his way. Now, if he's trying to clean his way, that means his way was once dirty. Even the one who wrote this. Remember, David. Remember David and Goliath? David wrote the Psalms. And David knows exactly what it means to walk in a dirty way. David was a dirty man when he made up his mind. He took a man's wife. He slept with her. He got her pregnant. He wanted the man to go and sleep so that the man could think that his child when the man didn't do it, he killed. He had the man killed in war. David knows how it is to walk dirty. Or ride in dirty. So, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Alright? How can you, who's done so much wrong, how can you, who feels so bad, how can you, who everybody says is a bad child, how can you who've made so many mistakes, you have lied, you have cheated, you have stolen, you may have even taken somebody else's life because you wanted to come into, uh, you, you wanted to make your gang love you. How can you cleanse your way by letting today be the day that you said, Lord, I want to be clean. Lord, I want you in my life. Lord, I want you to break. You know, they call it chains when the devil has you. He puts a lot of spiritual chains. 
He makes you think that you are not worthy. He makes you think that God has given up on you. He makes you think that you are no use to the world. You should just go kill yourself. You know how many children your age are committing suicides every single day? Suicide is like a pandemic. Young people are killing themselves because they believe they have no hope. There is no hope in this world, but there is hope in God's word. You can clean yourself by accepting Jesus Christ tonight and saying, I want to go a different path. I want to now follow God. Listen, it's not the easiest path. It's not the popular path, but it is the right path. And the strength you get by walking it is found in God. It's not found in yourself or in any food that you eat or in any, or in any energy drinks. It's found in God. So tonight you can be clean. Don't let anybody else tell you differently. Tonight, you can be clean by taking it according to God's word as found in the Bible. Listen to what David also said, you see. When you get into that relationship and you want to change, David says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Huh? Some of you, some of you young boys know exactly what that means. When you have a little girlfriend and um, every day that goes by, you know, or, or young girls ha has, sees a boy that she likes and, and you write their names down and you think about them all the time. And every time you hear the love songs that your heart beats and you think about that person and um, you want to see that person every day. You can't wait to get to school the next day to see that person. Some of you have that feeling already. Have that feeling for God. David said, with my whole heart. You see, you put your whole heart into the relationships we have here on earth. But do we put our whole heart into God? That's what God wants. God wants you to love him that way. And when you desire to love him that way, he will put that love in you. I want you to understand these things. Have I sought thee, or let me not wander from thy commandments? God has a way for you to live in this world. The only way to live is the way of God. In the end, it's everlasting life. In the end, it's paradise. That's guaranteed for those who walk with God. When you walk with the devil, in the end, it's destruction. It's the end, in the end, it's running from God. But in the end, when it comes to God, it's everlasting life. You will never die, never be sick. This is a promise. And yes, it doesn't seem that way because of what you see in the world, but it has already been promised by God, and it will happen, my dear young men and women. So David said also, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So your question now is, how do I stop doing wrong? How do I grow and learn so that Sorry, I cannot do the wrong things that I want to do every day. Naturally, we want to do the wrong every day. Even I have struggles. I have not arrived. When I am talking to you, I am also learning from talking to you. We all struggle with what the Bible calls flesh. Flesh is the natural birth that you are born in into this world. We all struggle in situations where we get upset, where people, where people make us sad. Where somebody kills our family member. We don't want to forgive them. Sometimes it's hard in the flesh. But David said, what you must do is as you read the Bible, as you pray to God, have these things inside you. Make it, appreciate the information that you are getting when it's good. And learn to love it. Read it over and over again. Watch videos like this and other videos of people who are teaching you the Bible over and over again. Yes, attending church is good. Not just to perform in the church, but to be a part of the service and to grow learning service. And um, so the church is a good place to learn things concerning God. It's not always the best place when you have some people who are not behaving themselves, but don't let that get you down. Try to go to a church where you are involved and they involve you in what the service is supposed to be. And the older ones who are here listening to me right now, at least be one who, who speaks up for the youth and make a way that the youth can be a participation 
in the church that you are attending if you see they are being kept down. Be a voice, man. If you're the only voice in the church, speak up for the youth and let the leaders of the church know that the youth is not the youth of tomorrow. It's now. Involve them now. You know, there are leaders there. Involve them. Get them involved in what we are doing. Teach them. Make it easier for them to want to come to church and be a part of what is going on. So when David says, as you grow learning the Bible, as you grow reading the Bible, as you learn to love God, the Bible says you get strength not to sin, not to do the right thing. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says with every temptation, God makes a way of escape. So when you are tempted, you call upon God, God gives you the strength to say no. When all your friends want to go out and smoke and drink and party and maybe do some illegal activities, in your heart, the Lord tells you, don't go. When your friends want to go drink and drive and race cars on the highway, the Lord tells you, don't go. When it's prom night, and the boy or the girl is pressuring you to get into a, a night of nice sex because the school year is over. The Lord is telling you, don't go. You have the decision to make now. Your body might be telling you, I want to go. But God is saying in the deep corners of your mind, don't do it. That's when you have the decision to make. No one can make that decision for you. Not mommy, not daddy, not brother Malcolm. You are going to be in that moment. Your body will tell you to go, but God will tell you not to go. My dear young men and women, I want you to understand. Heed the word of God and don't go. Because many young men and women have gone and it is the last time that they lived and they died in very horrible conditions. And you may not always die, but you will be led astray and you will give yourself to be a vessel through which Satan can work. So learn to read God's word, study his word, love his word, and you will get the strength to not do any wrong things. Listen to what David said as we come to a close. I will meditate. Huh? The world is telling you meditate and think of all these enchantments. Meditate on God's word. When you read a verse in the Bible, think about it. As I said, every word, meditate on it. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. David is talking about God. When you approach the study of the Bible, approach it with respect. Because God is higher than every one of us. And he wants what's best for us. And his wisdom is better than the wisdom of the world. The schools will teach you to become a good doctor, a good lawyer, a good policeman. But God will teach you to be a good soldier of God. And that is better than than any profession that the world can teach you. And trust me, when God teaches you, you'll even be a better doctor, a better lawyer, a better policeman, because you will have God in you helping you in your profession. All right? And God will be glorified in your service, my dear young men and women. And so that's what I want to share with you tonight. The world is appealing to your mind for you to serve Satan. God is appealing to your mind for you to serve God. You know, some people say God is unfair. Christianity is so hard. They make so much demands on you. But your gang does the same thing. Gangs make demands on young men and women all the time to do some of the most horrible things. Gangs control your life. They control what colors that you wear. They control who you hang out with. They control what you do and they control your life. Nobody realizes that. Gangs control you more than God. All the things of the world control you more than God. Your job wants to control you. Your school wants to control you. But God wants to serve. God wants you to serve him. God allows you to be free. To make choices. And then when you give yourself to him, he will give you his spirit to help you make the decisions that you need to make. So I'd rather have God control me any single day. Because once God is controlling me, I know I will make it to heaven. All right? So my dear boys and girls, brothers and sisters, young men and women, we have come to the end of our two-week series. I want to say a very heartfelt thank you for all the young men and women, boys and girls that viewed this program.
And some of you didn't view it live, but you view it after. It's not just about watching because your mother and dad said to watch. You can always go back and watch it over again for things you may have missed. It's for your education, for your knowledge, for your wisdom. I want to thank the parents who took the time to share it with their children. I know many of them may not watch, but I want to thank you for taking the time to share with your children what is going on here and some things they need to know. Just get them if they can watch one and then watch the other. We pray for them that they will do that. I want to thank every one of you, parents, guardians, youth, God bless you. This is our first time doing this. Yeah, Our very first time doing this. We don't know what would happen. We don't have, um, we're not affiliated with many churches who will allow this to be um, shared within their circles. We just put it out there and let God do the work. Amen. And so pray in your hearts that God will send this even further. Amen. You know, we have a group of you that watches us and we are very appreciative of you. Just pray that God sends these videos out, that others can view it. Young men and women who are lost in this world can view it and be saved. It is our solemn promise to God every single year during the summer that Sister Sadie and I are alive. We are going to do this two weeks. Next year and any year after that that we're alive. Every summer, you will have a two-week revival series for the youth, for our dear little children growing up. So God bless all of you. And I give you all thanks. I give God praise for each and every one of you. God bless you. And may the information that you have gotten for the last two weeks, from the little ones to the older ones, may it benefit you as you grow up in life. Remember, not everything is going to make sense now. But as you learn about God and learn about life, and as the situations come, it will click in all your minds. I want to say a special prayer to all of you, and then Sister Sadia will sing a special song. And I will bid you good night. And the next time I will see you, friends, we will be on on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And uh, next week, we'll resume live programming. Sunday night, quench. Living Water Thursdays next Thursday. And our Sabbath services continue. We'll not be live next Sabbath because I'll be visiting the Wayne SDA Church. But uh, we'll be live this Sabbath at 10 a.m. with the continuation of the saga of Agape. And so let us pray. And tonight I will say all the names from the littlest to the eldest mm -hmm. that has been given. And I pray, I invite you all, sorry, to pray with me on behalf of these children that God will certainly bless them, their parents and their guardians. Kind, loving Heavenly Father. The end has come for the live series, but the end is not for the content on YouTube. It is in your hands now to send these videos out there, to have others share these videos as needed. Dear Lord, the work that is done from the content that has been shared, we will never fully know. You only ask us to sow the seeds, put it out there, let it fall on the ground, and let it grow in the hearts and minds of our youth. Every one of them that came on, some may have only come on once, but let that one time that they come on really speak to them, motivate them, dear Father, to want to be better. Those who are already being raised by their parents in the faith, May the information continue their learning because we never know everything even when we're old. And so, dear Father, tonight before you is Addison, AJ, LJ, Giselle, Ethan, Jaden, Cabinus, Azariah, Andrina, Mason, Hope, Jada, Jude, Omari, Amelia, Roland, Ace, Wayne, Alex, Nadia, Adeline, Jade, Abigail, Elijah, Brent, Chelsea, Jaden, Tyler, Talia, Abigail, Elijah, Jacob, Bryce, Udi, Ezekiel, Alan, Sasha, Michaela, Zoe, Jessica, Mooney, Giselle, Faith, Redup, Jade, Niles, Shay, Jean Charles, Janiev, Brittany, Tabby, Tyler, these names given by parents and guardians 
for your blessings upon their lives. There are others tonight representing other young people. We lift their names before us before you today. There are some representing children just born. We lift them up before you. There are some with child that watch the program. We lift up the child in the womb before you. Bless them at every age, every stage of their life. Order their steps, dear Father. Give them the desire to want to serve you. Protect them from the menace that is the world and from the designs of the evil one and help them to make choices that benefit them for Christ not for themselves, not for any other person. Develop their minds, dear Father, that they can be able to stand in the truth at the age of one, at the age of five, at the age of seven, even 10, 12, 13, 15, 19, whatever stage of life. Help them to know that they can stand for you with the strength that you have given them. Continue to teach them. Bless them in school. May they be a light in their classroom that others can see and want to know you through their witness. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. I have done nothing in my own strength. I have done nothing in my own intelligence. I give you all the praise. Amen. I give you all the glory. Now, dear Lord, continue to bless the homes that these children are growing up in. Bless the parents to further the teaching. Bless this ministry to continue this year after year after year. And may it all be to your name's honor and glory. One day, we shall all be in heaven rejoicing based on this information that has saved us. Until then, keep us faithful. Dismiss us with your blessing. Keep us for the remainder of tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The, we have heard thy call, Lord Jesus, and our hearts respond with joy thank you friends we will it has been a wonderful blessing to speak to you night for after thy night cause, our young men young women be encouraged in the lord you god wants you in his army the world amen for the man Sister of Carol Smith, god bless you and your family brother specs god bless you with your princess and your prince, Abigail and Elijah, and Sister Anne-Marie, God bless you. My greetings to all your daughters. May God continue to order their steps. Sister Luem, give my love to Alan. May God continue to bless him. Brother Anthony Barr, God bless you, sir. Sister Vanette, God bless you, sis. Sister Christian Doctor, God bless you. God bless your children. God bless your grandchildren. May they continue to grow in the favor of God. Sister Justina Sigelman, God bless you. God bless your children and their children. God bless your family. Sister Jenna, God bless you. Ethan, be strong in the Lord. God is working wonders in you, Ethan. God bless you. Sister Mary, God bless you. God bless your children. God bless their children. And may God continue to keep them. Sister Anika, God bless you. God has called you to witness to the youth. Keep that witness going, Sister Anika, in whatever way God motivates you. God bless your brother Elijah. And God bless your mother. Sister Mary and Alexander, keep the faith. God bless you. God bless your children as well. Sister Paula Cho, God be with you. Brent, be strong in the Lord. Chelsea, be strong in the Lord. May God continue to keep you. Sister Camilla Arthur, God bless you and your family. Sister Maria Ramos, God bless you. And God keep you and your family. God bless every single one of you. We are continuing to pray for you and your children as you pray for us. Good evening. God bless. Shall thrill the youth of the world. Sister Agnita Baptiste, for the man God bless you Galilee, and enjoy Dominica for all of us. The <laughs> youth of the world from all sin and self set.
free Hallelujah. every talent pledge in service now and through eternity the you all the world for the man of galilee every talent pledge in service now and through eternity the you all the world for the man of Galilee. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sadia.